Starscream here, and when Megatron isn't around, I like watching video reviews from Optibotamus. Did I say that right? Where's my check? This is Optibonus coming with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Generations Fall of Cybertron Starscream. Now it took two video games for us to finally get this kind of iconic character. But lo and behold, there he is. We finally got him. This is definitely a character I was really excited about. And one that I really hope that we got in the original War for Cybertron game. But like I said, it took him a little while. Obviously they probably wanted to see the popularity of the initial War for Cybertron figures. To see if those would go over fairly well to warrant making more for the next game. As you can see, really nice figure though. So very cool. Uh, he does kind of look like he's missing some paint applications, which eh, might might bug me a little bit, but we'll see. You come around here to the side, series one, figure number 10. Then on the back, again, G1 style tech specs. Anytime that any company, Hasbro, third party companies, anytime those guys actually find a way to incorporate that look, really makes me happy i love seeing that uh, one thing that's funny is uh, obviously he's got a skill of 10 star scream is a very skilled uh, fighter and, and warrior i suppose but then he's got a courage of only three <laughs> Pretty funny if you ask me. Uh, he's got spinning assault cannons. Obviously a Sab Cybertron Sabertronian. Oops. Cybertronian jet fighter. And it says there was a time when Starscream was an honorable soldier who fought for the defense of Cybertron. But long isolation aboard an orbital platform made him greedy and ambitious. Given the opportunity to once again lead troops, he gladly joined Megatron. Uh, if you remember from the War for Cybertron game, yeah, he was the leader of that uh, orbital platform. And that's we, we actually got to see the meeting between Starscream and Megatron and their, their kind of personalities and their, uh, their relationship kind of develop. Very, very cool. But absolutely wonderful. I love the new artwork on here. I love the way that that looks. Really nice big image of the uh, actual game character of Starscream. So this is a figure that I've really been looking forward to ever since like I said, the very first game. So let's hope he lives up to the hype. And the only way we're going to find that out is let's get him open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys. So here we have Starscream open up and out of its packaging and obviously in his jet mode. Now, when you look at this, one thing that I instantly kind of get a feel for is uh, obviously the game. I mean, this has a very nice game look to it. They did a nice job of recreating it. Uh, but some of this like kind of grayish plastic is really kind of dull, if you ask me. Now, and, there, and there's a fair amount of it. I, I, w I wish that was just a little bit different of a color or something. I, I don't know. Now, I know the uh, the Arms Micron one is going to come out, or I don't know if it's Arms Micron or if it's just the Takara one, but there were some better paint applications on it but this one is the one that's out retail so this is what more people are going to be getting so this is really what you're basically going to be getting your hands on when that comes out uh, he does have his head kind of right there which some people have kind of complained about it doesn't bug me all that much uh, it's not attractive looking but it's it's there i mean you can <laughs> flip it forward and you can have him poking at you if or looking at you if you really want but uh, it, it it doesn't bug me really all that much because it folds back and it kind of hides fairly well uh, now his weapons very cool looking now i know people are going to sit there and tell me because i read through all my comments on the kickback review and i know that these weapons are replicated from weapons that are actually used in the game uh, for example kickback uh, his weapon I, I don't remember what people were calling it but i didn't pay attention to the names of the weapons uh, in the video games I, I know that these ones have a specific name but the packaging for these do not denote that at all so if you go back and watch my kickback review uh, whatever the actual name for that saw weapon is it's not what it's called on the packaging and because i don't know the name of it i'm not much of a gamer uh, i played the game i love the game beat the game had a fun time with it i didn't pay attention to the names of the weapons though i just knew what they did so uh, i i do know that these are from the game as well but i I, I can't tell you the names of them and honestly I don't care people are gonna tell me and I'm gonna get 40 different comments in the first 10 minutes of this video being up telling me the names of the weapon but don't care really don't care but they are really kind of cool looking I do dig them they do rotate just like so now uh, as I mentioned it does have a video or a very video game look and it really does the one problem that I have with it is the transformation and to do that I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these right now uh, I mean I don't have a 
big problem with the transformation. I just think it's a little bit too simple, and you can take them off, obviously, and you can have them like this. I just think that the transformation is really kind of simple. I, I still like the figure. Don't get me wrong. This is probably my second favorite of the new deluxes that we have. But when I compare Kickback to this one, while I love both of these figures, I think the transformation, at least on Kickback, is a little bit better and just edges Starscream a little bit more. So first what you want to do, you want to come here to the back, just take these, these are going to unpeg from his legs. And I've got to get a little push. You see the little hole right here, and they peg right in there. And then just flip these down like so. I'll take this little bit, tuck that under, flip that down. That'll lock into place kind of. Then just straighten out these legs, fold out the foot just like so. Come up here to the top, come in here to the arms, and they just pull out like that and like that all the way out like so. Bring this down and then when you do it you're going to angle this whole section up it's kind of a pain in the butt really to kind of do but angle that bit up just like so kind of straighten out these arms take the head rotate that around this whole section here then you got a little butt hole <laughs> and then you plug that in there so it's just yeah like that yeah i said butthole and then you rotate this around Rotate that around. These little bits here, you can kind of angle these however you want, and then these little bits just fold down. And here, Starscream. Now, uh, I, like I said, I don't mind the, the transformation. I just think it's a little bit more simple than I would really kind of like. And when I'm comparing it to the complexity and the fun that Kickback had, this guy really is kind of uh, underwhelming in that transformation aspect. The other thing that I have a problem with is he he's a fairly hollow figure. Uh, Again, normally that doesn't bug me, but for, for me with Starscream, it, it does kind of bug me, uh, especially, again, when I'm comparing them to other figures. I mean, now, don't get me wrong. I love the way this guy looks. This is an absolute wonderful representation of Starscream from the video game, although he kind of looks like he's a little bit chunky, just a little beer belly kind of thing on him. But I love the way he looks. I just wish that he was a little bit more filled in. And the transformation was a little bit more complex. Those are the only things that are really keeping this from being a superb figure, in my opinion. That and then, you know, the, the gray, like I said, there's a lot of it here. And that really kind of detracts from him. Now, his weapons, uh, th there's a couple different things that you can do. You Obviously, you can have him hold his gun um, in his hand, which Starscream doesn't hold his guns. You don't have Starscream hold his weapons. That's just the way it goes. Uh, you can take this, you can plug this on the side do that on this side as well and you can kind of sort of replicate the null rays uh, that he's famous for having and one thing that I absolutely love is that on the forearms here zooming in so that you can see what it's talking about it really looks like this whole section kind of comes out as if his arms are transforming to bring these guns out which is really very cool uh, but I mean that that looks that looks cool uh, it, it kind of looks weird because most of the time Starscream's weapons are up on his actual upper arm, not so much down on his forearm. So it looks kind of weird, at least on Starscream. The other thing that you can do is you can combine these weapons. Uh, and, and this is actually a really kind of neat thing. It, it kind of at least reminds me of uh, in, in the video game when you're able to control the, the giant gun turrets. You can actually plug this together. And like I said, these rotate around. So I'm kind of anal with it. So I like lining these up uh, and then as you rotate them you can see or i'm gonna do it here rotate these and they spin together that's absolutely cool i totally dig that and then you can have him hold one in his hand right like that rotate that around plug that in like that and oh, now get get that in there all the way uh, and now like for me that I mean it kind of looks silly but it really does kind of at least for me replicate how it would look if he was in one of those gun turrets I really dig that look I mean it's really nice the one thing that I can't figure out for the life of me is uh, when you do put these together it kind of creates this little hole here uh, I, I don't know why I, I don't really see a peg anywhere uh, I could be mistaken, um, but I don't really see much of a peg. I mean, you, you you got him here on the side, but there's no way to get that in there. So I'm not 100% sure. What Maybe that's just, I, hell if I know, I mean, but it's kind of weird how that would actually be there. And then, like I said, if you don't have them lined up right, uh, you get a weird rotation that's not symmetrical, which 
kind of drives me nuts. <laughs> so we'll just take that apart. But very cool figure nonetheless. Now, one of the neatest aspects about him is this guy's got a really cool face sculpt. And part of that face sculpt is some of the best light piping on a Hasbro figure that I've seen in a long time. I mean, I've given a lot of credit to companies like TFC Toys with their light piping on, unlike their uh, Hercules and Uranus sets. But this is cool. I mean, that's really bright. And that's just coming from my lights here. I mean, very good light piping. But you can also see a very nice uh, lightness to Starscream itself. I absolutely love the head sculpt on that figure. And then for a bit of a size comparison, here you see him next to a couple of the, the Deluxe figures. Obviously, you got the War for Cybertron Deluxe Class Soundwave. Then the Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Class Shockwave. Uh, and Shockwave is a... Is a now, they're about the same height, actually, but, uh, I mean, obviously, Shockwave looks a little bit smaller. And then setting him off, you can see that Megatron is a much bigger figure, and obviously, that's accurate because Megatron is a Voyager-sized figure. But for one kind of fun comparison, here is in front of his, uh, well, G1 creation, the Combaticons, and there you have him standing in front of Bruticus. So very cool and very nicely scaled, if you ask me. For his articulation, his head is on his ball joint, but, well, it's not even on a ball joint. It just kind of lifts up and down as part of the transformation, so it really just kind of rotates. The uh, the arm swivels here, but obviously you see what's going on where that's kind of uh, detached from the body, which kind of is ugly, but it doesn't bug me too terribly much. But then the shoulders are on individual, uh, and those aren't even on ball joints either. Those, they just rotate. They, they have a rotation right up in here, and then right on here they rotate. So there's not even a ball joint there. That's kind of interesting. And then they rotate at the upper part of the bicep. They got two bends here at the elbow. Wrists are articulated, nothing at the waist. And then the hips, again, I thought those were ball joints, but they're not. They just uh, move forward and back. And then, uh, well, in and out as well, and then they rotate. So basically recreating a ball joint without actually using a ball joint, which is very, very cool. Bends here at the knee, and then uh, the toes got a little bit of pivot. And I guess he's got some ankle pivot. Not much, but you can get him doing uh, more wider stances uh, like that, I suppose, and kind of makes him look mean and bulky, I guess. That's actually not too bad, though. <laughs> But uh, very cool figure, regardless. I, I really do like him. I mean, like I said, to me, it, it really is a, a competition between him and, and Kickback as, as the best figures of these new Fall of Cybertron figures. And uh, if, if I were to give Kickback, like, say, a 9, this guy would be, like, an 8.75. I mean, I, I really do like him. So, well, maybe not 8.75. Like, let, let, let's, let's give him a solid 8. I guess, uh, because really the transformation, like I said, is very simple, and then the hollowness in the actual robot mode is something that just kind of bugs me. It, it's just not becoming of him, I, I suppose, but eh, that's about it, though. And now for the transformation back, again, all you do, just lift these, take the head, rotate this all the way around like so, pull this out of his butt, <laughs> straighten these, out like so and then this whole section here his head if it doesn't fold back sometimes it folds back automatically if it doesn't just fold it back like so fold these up and then you're gonna see a little uh, slot here and here and then there's little tabs on the insides of these shoulder bits that just kind of lock down in place like so then you want to bring these arms around rotate them around kind of keep the fist down and then just push them all the way up inside here do that as well on this side there we go. And then these forearms actually come together and they peg together right there. It's kind of tough. It, the, the peg doesn't really even do much of anything. It, it just kind of sits there kind of. But straighten that out. Oh, that kind of detached. These little legs will fold back. And then take these. Plug that in. Do that on this side as well. Like so. Straighten out the, uh, the wings a little bit. Pull out the nose cone, just like so. Take these weapons, and I mean, it really kind of depends on which way you want to actually put the weapons in here. I mean, you got this big giant peg, and you got the smaller one, but I like actually doing it on this side where you see all the gears and everything on that side. Because I mean, you could, like I said, you could uh, put it down here where you got the ugly side on the bottom. But I, I, th I think that being able to look at all the mechanics and such of the actual detail of the weapon just looks a little bit better 
than what we have here so uh, it's, that's you know weapons personal preference i suppose and then if you wanted to you can angle these up i guess and uh one other one other little peg section if you wanted to angle these up a little bit you can take these you can put, plug them in here i suppose uh just kind of again depends on how you want to position them you can actually peg them into the legs so either way it, it, it as i as i have said it is just personal preference i just think it looks a little bit better like this but you know individual results may vary straighten that out just like so and uh here you have starscream back in his cybertronian jet mode now for me as i as i said when it comes down to it this guy and and kickback really are in the running for best fall of cybertron figures at least in terms of the deluxe class toys starscream makes a good effort he, he he you know really gives uh kickback a run for the money but i really think that kickback is the better of the two figures starscream while nice in both modes does have a little bit of a weakness at least in his robot mode the jet mode here looks perfectly fine i don't have a problem with it it's pretty accurate looking to the game the transformation though he, he loses a little bit not much just because he's simple doesn't mean he's a bad transformation or a transformer it's just not all that much fun i mean it's, it's easy to do so you could do it over and over again but you don't feel satisfied when you're done and there's no real challenge or anything with transforming this guy. And then the robot mode, well, again, looks really good. I just think there's some bits about it that really keep it from being a much better figure than it possibly could be. Such as, like, the whole hollowness in the torso area. This guy definitely, though, without a shadow of a doubt, is worth picking up. But don't let those minor nitpicks, you know, kind of dissuade you from getting this guy. He is well worth picking up, and he's absolutely fun. Not to mention, he's Starscream. Who doesn't like Starscream? And here's another one that we can get our hands on that's really kind of in its own continuity, so to speak. Very fun figure, highly recommended, and well worth checking out if you guys can find him in stores. But that's about it, guys. So I want to thank you for tuning in. And until next time, this has been Optobotomous. I'll talk to you later.